it play the intense one from the desktop. How hard is that? <laughs> Survive war. You gotta be really good at war. So I've got some new footage to show you from the They Shall Not Pass DLC that you haven't seen yet, including that one scary looking Tuscan Raider guy in the map that looks like Hamburger Hill from back in Nam. Everybody watching? This is gonna be ridiculous. Now the event that I attended was full of both YouTubers and members of the press, so if you happen to see me kill somebody like James from IGN over and over and over again, please cut him some slack, because he was probably using an Xbox controller. I've killed you a lot. Seriously, stay dead! This is weird! Starting things off, it may be a little weird for me to cover this Trench Raider guy, even though I didn't get a chance to play him. It's almost like me doing a review of a Ferrari, only instead of driving the Ferrari and being run over by the Ferrari, it's still a review, it's just not the review you were expecting. He's got a giant trench mace that can one-shot anybody without having to enter the melee animation, and he has a trusty revolver secondary in case he feels like shooting somebody. Seeing as he's melee focused, super quick, and in constant need of healing, you can think of him as the battlefield equivalent of Genji, only instead of a mercy slave following you around for heals, you can just heal yourself. I need healing. His ability to mass people into potatoes isn't even the scariest part about him, because the only thing more terrifying than his killing power is his fiery moan that he lets out anytime he does something. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really not even sure if he's some kind of French super soldier or just the secret planner's peanut man in disguise. Now you can't spell nutrition without nut. So to answer the question that you didn't ask with a definitive response, yes, he's neato and effective. But will I ever choose him over a tank hunter? Fuck no. 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 Picking the trench raider instead of picking the tank hunter is like picking a ninja turtle instead of Godzilla. Are you out of your mind? Like seriously, people think this dude Trench Raider is gonna be imbalanced when the Tank Hunter exists? Give me a break. Point, shoot, dead, point, shoot, dead, point, shoot, laugh, dead! I'm sorry, I can't hear you over the sound of my 13 kill streak. I think the only situation more horrifying than seeing an elite in front of you is seeing multiple elites, which is definitely a thing. Accuracy is on dogs! Like on Verdun Heights operations, I was able to play as double Uzi holding Italian guy while somebody else was the Trench Raider. Do you think the defending team was able to hold that base? Speaking of this new Verdun Heights map, it's pretty simple to describe in the words of Alessandro Alori. Shit's on fire, yo. By the way, if any of you guys post jokes in the comments section about this map being lit, I'm gonna proverbially set you on fire by banning you from my channel forever. Just as a heads up, this map is narrow, it has zero vehicles, and the upper section is where everything is set ablaze and unequivocally the most fun. Yes? And hell yes! I personally found operations on this map to be an absolute blast, but Conquest was kinda just sprinting from flag to flag playing Ring Around the Rosie. And as far as this new Frontlines game mode, it's pretty simple to understand. There are three flags to capture, but only one is unlocked at any point in time. Once you capture all three, then the game turns into Rush, and you're forced to blow up two MCOM-like objectives, and you win the game. Tick! Tick! Probably another tick. Boom! If that's too difficult to understand, I'm pretty sure Roblox is a good free-to-play alternative that you may want to check out. <laughs> One characteristic to note is that the capping time of these flags is very slow, but the cap radius is gigantic, so it's not like you can stroll over the squad and just run the other team over. You do need a considerable number of bodies to get these objectives capped. Some of the other new items are melee weapons, including an agricultural tool, a nail knife, and even a saber without having to ride a horse, even though the horses are ultra-effective on these maps. Here I come, sir! general, on all of these maps and in all these game modes, you're able to play any class or style you want and still succeed, so I can admire the versatility. You 
died again! Neat! Unless you're playing Fort DeVoe, in which case you better equip the super Swedish shotgun and start spamming nades like they're water balloons. What, you don't believe me? Why don't you take a guess as to who was constantly finishing highest on the scoreboard in both KDR and objective play? I dare you. <laughs> and that whole auto-loading cannon howitzer looking thing, not that amazing. I guess it was somewhat effective because the opposition tended to cluster together like granola, but it's barely better than a regular mortar and you're completely exposed to rookie snipers. So I would skip this thing altogether. Calling down the thunder! That's a metaphor! And that's about it. Be sure to tune in next time when I stop murdering people from GameSpot and IGN and just about every other video game journalist that happens to suck at video games.